This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Valeria interviews Amy Draper, the author of the Love Letter Gratitude Journal series and also the Not Now, I'm Gratituding, the one-minute-a-day gratitude journal for people who want more peace, balance, and positivity in their lives. Amy Draper designed the Love Letter Gratitude Journal series to help us delve more deeply into our heart, mind, soul, and body and discover ways for us to be grateful for all we are. They're each filled with helpful prompts, inspirational quotes, and even a few coloring pages for those days when words are too much. Ever said to yourself, I really wish I could find a gratitude journal that I could stick to? Me too. That's why Amy Draper designed her journals. She was having trouble sticking to a daily gratitude practice, mostly because she struggled to come up with a list of things she was grateful for each morning. Amy is not a morning person at all. If you want her to list what she's grateful for first thing in the morning, 95% of the time it will be number one, coffee, and number two, her bed. She became so frustrated with her practice that she stopped doing it. Why bother if all she ever lists are these two things with a few extras thrown in to round it out? Plus, her journal included a nightly wrap-up section that she forgot to do about 75% of the time. So, yeah, Amy's gratitude practice was suffering. One morning, she realized that if this wasn't working for her, then she needed to find something that would, because a consistent gratitude practice is really beneficial for her mental health. When she stopped filling out her journal, she could see an actual difference in how she was feeling, and it wasn't good. The problem was, Amy couldn't find a journal that worked. Most gratitude journals out there follow this same formula, List the things you're grateful for today, then recap how your day went. That works for many people, just not her. So she designed a journal that did work for her. And she put it out into the world, believing that if it worked for her, maybe it would work for others too. It became the Love Letters to Myself journal. Amy followed that up with two others that rounded out her gratitude practice. Love Letters to My Younger Self and Love Letters to My Body. Together, these three journals form the base of her self-care routine. It's hard to feel grateful for what's around you when you don't feel grateful for who you are. These journals help Amy get to that place. A few weeks later, she got the idea to design the Not Now, I'm Gratituding journal. This journal follows the more typical gratitude journal format because you list things you're grateful for each day. However, instead of having nightly recaps, Amy designed the journal with a weekly format. At the beginning of each week, you set your intention, what you want to focus on for that week. At the end of each week, you give yourself credit for what you accomplished, big or small. In between, you find something to be grateful for each day. A gratitude journal that takes the pressure off to be on every day. Amy Draper spent 17 years as a corporate attorney handling SEC filings and corporate transactions, among other matters. However, a few years ago, she caught the writing bug when the legal world had left her feeling jaded, unfulfilled, and stressed out. Amy recently traded in her business suits for comfy sweats and now spends her days practicing self-care and writing happily ever afters in between feeding her addiction to journals by designing and selling them. All this in between paying copious amounts of attention to her various rescue animals, of course. Here is the interview with Amy Draper. In your own words, who is Amy Draper? Amy Draper is a work in progress, I think. Um, 
I am on a lifelong journey to discover sort of who who the best version of Amy Draper is and how I can show up as that person day in and day out. And I think it's um, not only a lifelong journey of exploration, but also a lifelong journey of um, evolution, right? So who Amy Draper is today and the best version of myself today is not going to be the same person as, you know, the best version of myself a year from now. Um, and so it's, it's really a lifelong journey and it's, um, one that I'm happy to undertake and have been doing so for a number of years and am um, very happy with where, where I happen to be today, but always, um, Lots of lots of work to, to do on myself <laughs> as well. I love the way you say that. That's who I am today. Before we talk about the Love Letter Gratitude Journal series, I have a few warm-up questions, as I mentioned, off record. The first one is, what is another word for gratitude? Oh, that is a great question. I think another word for gratitude uh, might be appreciation. Um, so it's a, a way of looking at life and the circumstances that you're in and the things that surround you and being able to look at them and appreciate everything for what, for what, for what it is. Um, and not necessarily try to attribute any sort of emotion, a happy emotion to it, but really just appreciate it for what it is, what it's providing for you, um, and and the, the lessons that you can learn from it. So I, I think appreciation might be a good word for it. What is your own definition of strength? <sighs> strength, I think, has a lot to do with resiliency. So it's the ability to um, kind of weather life's ups and downs and um, stay true to yourself and true to your path. Um, even when things get difficult, even when things seem easy or boring, <laughs> not <laughs> into it, really understanding who you are and what path you're on and um, being able to stay true to that um, regardless of what happens, I think is my definition of strength. To stay true to what we know, right, about ourselves, yeah. What is the meaning of freedom to you, Amy? Freedom for me, I think, has a lot to do with, um, again, knowing yourself. But in this perspective, I think it's, it's feeling free to express yourself in whatever way feels true at this moment. So it's staying true to yourself. It's being able to show up as yourself, um, as the person that you decide you want to be. Um, and just having the ability and the strength and the freedom to do that. At this time, what do you think is the world's greatest need? And um, what is your vision for a new reality? Wow, what a great question and such a timely question. Uh, you know, I think based upon the journey that I've gone on um, over the last few years, I and, and building on the, the topic that you just mentioned, I self-care, I think, is something that we need to start um, practicing more of. Um, and I think that the, um, the quarantine and the safer at home mandates and the pandemic have shown us that perhaps, you know, the, the world that we were in where we were, you know, working 12, 14 hour days and not taking enough time off and, and really sort of pushing ourselves to that next level, whatever that level is professionally or personally is maybe not the best way that we can handle things. Um, and it's maybe not as healthy for us as uh, what we expected. And so I think adding a, a practice of self-care where you are taking care of yourself so that you are then in a better position to be able to take care of your family and your loved ones and your coworkers is something that I, I think we need to build back into the new reality.
Do you connect self-love to self-care? Are they interconnected? In the most basic sense, yes. I think that you get to self-love through self-care. Um, so yeah, I think there is a connection there. What is love to you? Ooh, love, I think, is the point of origin of pretty much everything else. So you can't you can't have a gratitude practice, I don't think, without love. Um, you can't you can't really um, practice self-care without love. You can't um, help your neighbors without love. You, you, you can't really build deep and meaningful relationships without love. So for me, love is sort of the beginning of everything and um, the basis for building everything else in our lives. I love that, Amy, again. Yeah. Love is the foundation, right? It's the foundation. That's a great word. Yes. <laughs> What is your understanding and idea of peace? Oh, peace. Such a big word and a big concept. Um, I start inward with peace. Um, so it really is a place of balance for me. When I can experience peace, I know that my life is in balance. So I, I'm not tilting one way or another towards you know, work or play or family or self. It's peace is that place where I can find balance. Um, as you start to kind of go outward from yourself, um, I, you know, well, actually, no, I think it's the same as you go outward from yourself. So I think that by finding balance in the world around you, you're going to find peace in the world around you as well. Uh, so that I think that's, I think that's kind of where I go when someone says peace <laughs> to me, a nice place of balance and comfort. Yeah, I love that word. And I believe that too. And I absolutely love what you said about inner peace, connected the inner with peace. Yeah. My next question is about God. What, where, and who is God to you? That is another big question and big concept. Um, I, you know, I think though God, God is, God is in the details. God is in the all of the little places in your life where you can find balance, where you can find peace, where you can um, practice self-care in the quiet places where you can allow your mind to expand. Um, it's it, it, this concept of God um, is it's kind of in it's it's part of the universe. Um, it's it's part of the the cosmos, but it's also you know in the the leaves and the tree that's outside my window right now. It's in the you know the tweets and the birds. It's it's in you know this this conversation that you and I are having. Um, so it's in all of those little details. I think is where you find where you find God. Do you see a difference between spirituality and religion? I do. Um, Personally, I, I definitely do. Um, I think that, um, at least from my perspective, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm much more a spiritual person than I am a religious person. I think religion is more along a set of um, constructs and rules, which that sounds like a very harsh way of looking at it. And that's not, that's not what I mean, but there's, um, right. each religion has its own sort of set of parameters, whereas spirituality is just like I described, it's in, it's in the, the details all around you. And you can certainly experience spirituality without, um, practicing any particular religion. And my last warm up question is what do you think is the purpose of life, the human experience? I, I think actually you answered the question. It's the human experience. So the purpose of life is the experience. It's the journey that we're all on. It's the path that we follow. Um, and it's in um, sort of the, the, the evolution that we go through, the growth that we go through as we experience everything that we go through in life. Um, so I think, I think the purpose is... For me, it's the journey. Um, I think that's why we're here. Mm. 
to be human, to be ourselves, right? I love that. <laughs> so let's talk about your work. How did you become a writer? I, I think I've always been a writer. Um, I, I am a, actually a trained lawyer. Um, and there's such a huge component um, in being an attorney that's it's writing based. Um, in college, I took every course that I could take that had some element of writing, some paper due or creative writing courses. Um, so I, I think I've always been a writer. Um, over the last, call it four or five years, maybe a little bit longer than that, um, I had been thinking about trying to bring more balance back into my life um, that was largely centered around my job and my career. And so I started um, writing, just creative writing, fiction writing on the side as a hobby, as a way to try and bring more creativity into my life. So many, yeah. so, so such a large aspect of my life was very sort of logic based and formula based. And, you know, as an attorney, that's kind of what you do. Um, and yeah. I wanted to bring some creativity into that to bring more balance into my life and to try and, um, you know, become a little bit more at peace help with the anxiety issues that I was experiencing and, and doing that sort of thing. Um, but when I um, decided to take some time off at the beginning of the year, I had a lot of personal changes as well happen in 2019. And um, at the beginning of the year, when I was trying to develop a consistent self-care practice as a way to kind of help me through some of the big questions that were going through my head at the beginning of the year with all of these changes that had, had occurred, um, I realized that the gratitude journals that I was using um, weren't helping. Um, you, they were largely just list three things that you're grateful for. And when you weren't even sure what you were doing or what I was, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I, I certainly had lost a little bit of my mooring um, and felt a little bit lost on my path. And so it was difficult for me, even with meditation, to come up with um, something to feel grateful for that day. And, you know, there were only so many times that I could list my cat and coffee before it just felt as though this, this practice wasn't working for me. <laughs> so, um, after a few weeks of not having a gratitude journal or not keeping a gratitude journal, um, I actually did start to feel my mental health take um, a downward turn. And I, and I know I, you know, gratitude has been part of my self-care practice for a number of years now. And it has been because it does help me. Um, and without it, I started to actually, things just felt like they were spiraling out of control. And so in a search for trying to find a gratitude journal that would work for me, um, I couldn't. I couldn't find anything that was really sort of speaking to me. And so I decided to design my own <laughs> because I needed something. And so these journals were designed because they're that's what I needed at the time. And I decided to publish them because I, I figured, well, if if it's something that I need, maybe it's something that uh, might help other people as well. So that's kind of how I ended up as a published gratitude journalist. <laughs> and they are beautiful, though. I love the affirmations, the coloring symbols you have and the quotes. Sure. I got, a, I've actually gotten a lot of, of, a lot of compliments on the, the adding um, just some very simple coloring pages in there, but those are there because there are days where words just don't happen and you need to have the ability to continue a, a, a gratitude practice um, even on days when the words are just hard. And so that's, that was kind of the basis for sticking those coloring pages in there was just the ability to um, do something a little bit different on those days. Yeah. And I love that. Absolutely love and believe in this kind of method for calming the mind and being grateful. That's interesting. They are connected, very much connected. I, yeah, I mm. believe they are. It's back to that concept of balance and sometimes just taking 10 minutes out of your day 
and and doing something as simple as coloring um, will help bring peace and balance back into your world, right? Why did you choose to become a corporate attorney? I think I kind of just fell into it, um, which is actually, I think, an answer a lot of attorneys are going to give you is their practice. They sort of just fell into that practice. Um, I, I actually started out as a paralegal first. I wanted to test the waters to make sure that I was ready for the commitment of law school. And I um, happened to get an internship at a corporation. Um, That was where the internship was. And um, I, you know, I liked the work. It was interesting work. It was a little bit different every day. And um, I I just kind of stuck with it. Right. Like you said in the beginning of the conversation that this is me today. So that was you yesterday. That's right. (laughs) Yeah, that's nice. So what is the difference between the Love Letter Gratitude Journal series and the Not Now I Am (laughs) Gratituding? That's an interesting title. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Um, So the um, the Love Letter series um, are designed to um, kind of help navigate or maybe circumvent, mitigate might be the better word, um, that critical inner voice that we seem to all have, um, that in moments of high anxiety, in moments of stress, gets really, really loud and can sometimes take hold and then take over all of the other inner conversations in your head. And so what, what those letters, what, well, they're, they're all designed as letters to either yourself, to your physical self, to your younger self, um, as a way to um, quiet that negative voice, as a way to allow that um, sort of that kind and wise voice that sometimes gets um, over o- overridden by that critical voice, allowing that, that kind, wise voice um, to show up and to guide us. Um, so that's, those are there. Um, that, that's the, that's the format of those journals. Um, they're also nonlinear. Um, so if there is, if you get to a particular page that you just aren't feeling, um, you can flip to an another page. Um, you can jump back and forth. You can, um, you can decide to do a week's worth of coloring if that's really what you need that way. <laughs> so they're all, they're nonlinear and they're there. It's there to just kind of provide you with different prompts and different, um, perspectives depending on what you need in that particular day. I love um, that too. <laughs> no rules, I, right, Emmy? <laughs> no rules. And again, yeah. I mean, I was because I was struggling with come up with three things today, come up with three new things tomorrow, come up with three new things, you know, the next day. Um, I I was struggling with that. Because, and as I was designing this, I realized that, you know, some days what I need is different than what I needed yesterday. Um, and so what I wanted to do was provide a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of flexibility in order to help you keep consistent with your gratitude practice, because that consistency I think is really key in getting to a place where gratitude just simply becomes part of who you are. Um, the not now I'm gratituding journal is it, it, it follows the format of many other gratitude journals where you do have a list of, um, you, you are provided with a prompt to list a few things today that you're grateful for, but it's done in a, in a way that fill out as many or as few as you need to that day. Um, and it's also rather than trying to sort of set your intention and have a, like a, a, a very, a, a more strict regiment, um, a daily regiment with your gratitude practice, it sort of sets the intention by week. So at the beginning of every week, you're going to set your intention for the week. What is it that you want to try and focus on? Um, then you have your, your seven days of gratitude. And at the end, there's a place for you to recap. Um, so even if you didn't, even if you're th- what, what you set out to do that week, um, you didn't get to, you still did something. And so let's give ourselves some credit for what we did do um, during that week. Um, and then 
go again the next week. So it's rather than being more of a daily focus, it's more of a weekly focus. Yeah. Again, felt a little bit more flexible and something that as I, as I graduate through my own gratitude practice could be something that I'd be much more inclined um, to continue to do on a, a consistent basis. So that's the difference. I love that it's not linear, like you said, no rules to there's something about writing, journaling. It's so healing, yeah. isn't it? It really, really is. Um, I, you know, it, this is going to sound very silly, but I, mm -hmm. I actually was pleasantly surprised at how helpful I found my journals to be as I started to use them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Which is silly since I designed them, but right. you know, as you're going through and designing things, you're never quite sure how it's going to turn out in practice. But um, yeah, those those daily prompts and just the ability to spend five minutes and write some words that are sitting in your head, I think are very helpful. I also use free journaling um, as part of my self-care practice as well um, for those times where you've got something on a loop in your head or big emotions that you need to kind of work your way through, peel through like an onion. Free journaling helps a lot with that in trying to kind of just get down into the the weeds and, and figure out what's going on. Getting it out of your head and onto paper um, is a big, um, it's a big help with stress and anxiety if, if you suffer from those things. Do you think that journaling, it's also helps with depression and grief? I, I think journaling helps with all forms of mental care. Um, It's just one of those things where the act of taking feelings out of your head and giving them a voice yeah. um, and putting them on paper and then putting that paper away. And sometimes, sometimes if you need to burn the pages to release it, then you burn the pages to release it safely mm -hmm. or throw them away. Um, but it's just getting those things out of your head where you, you, you can, my head anyway, if it gets stuck in there for too long, I start to obsess about it. And the longer I obsess over something, the worst case, the worst things feel and the worst things seem. Yeah. <laughs> and I go to gloom and doom, um, but getting them out of my head, whether it's grief, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, all of those things sort of exist in your head, being able to get them out of your head, also clears them from your body. Mm -hmm. And so now they exist on a piece of paper, which is much more objective. Um, and it's also separate from you. Yeah. <laughs> so it does, I think, help um, with all forms, at least in my experience, it has helped with all forms of, of mental health for me. Yeah, yeah, it's highly healing. It's so true. I would say so too. You wrote something interesting here. It is hard to feel grateful for what's around you when you don't feel grateful for who you are. How do we know when we are there? Oh, I don't know if we ever truly know that. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that, um, You know, I, I think that having a self-care practice that allows you quiet time um, to reflect on what's going on with you and what's going on around you, um, that includes journaling, um, gratitude journaling, free journaling, whatever type of journaling works for you. Um, I think that you start to learn more about yourself and you start to, um, you start to gain acceptance for who you are mm -hmm. in this moment. And I think that that's maybe the most that we can expect. So mm -hmm. I know who I am today. Um, but I, I don't know who I'll be tomorrow. Right. Um, but I have the tools in place to help me understand who I'm going to be tomorrow. I also know um, I, I, by, by, by creating a gratitude practice and a consistent gratitude practice, yeah. Um, yeah. it helps you see life through that filter and, and understand the lessons yeah. um, around you. So all of the things, all of the bad things and the good things that have happened to you really aren't 
bad or good. Well, I mean, some might be bad or good, but largely our, our lessons that we've learned and opportunities to grow. And by understanding sort of what the opportunity for growth is, you can then take that journey and follow that path and grow in that way so that you have a better understanding of who you are tomorrow because you've honored the journey that you've been on today. So I, because I believe, I really truly believe that we, we are on a lifelong journey and we will continue to evolve throughout that journey. I don't know that we will ever truly get to a place where I know exactly who I am, but by allowing yourself some, some time and some space to really honor who you are in this moment, I think, I think that helps get you to a place where you're on much more solid footing in that regard. And that's why I love, absolutely love what you said earlier about, yeah, I know this is me today. Tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> Spiritual fun. <laughs> if you'd ask 20-year-old me and 40-year-old me was going to be who I was, I don't know that I would have been able to predict that. <laughs> so, yeah. There are three books, uh, Love Letters to Myself, Love Letters to My Younger Self, and love letters to my body. So it's interesting that the love letters to my younger self, it was a prompt for learning to honor our past self. So my question is, why is learning to honor our past self often so challenging? Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that... Um, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with how our brains work. Um, in, in order to protect ourselves, I, our brains tend to only remember the bad things that happened, yeah. um, and the things that went wrong, because those are things then that your brain knows, gosh, we should try to avoid those things because bad things happened, things went wrong and it was a, it was a disaster. And so we want to try to avoid that. Um, and so in, in moments of high anxiety and stress for me, the first thing my brain does is return to all the mistakes of my past, right? right? right. Um, just to, you know, prove the point mm -hmm. that we should, we should remain in the status quo, um, because that's where we're safest. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think, I, I, I think it's really just a, sort of a protective mechanism in that lizard brain that we have that's just trying trying to keep us safe. Um, and by doing that, by, by, by focusing on you know, the, the, the terrible things of our past, that's how, that's one of the ways that our, our, our lizard brain tries to keep us in the status quo and therefore, by definition, safe. Um, and so the journal was really designed to, again, counteract mm -hmm. that voice, um, to, to really look at your past as a, a journey and learning and opportunities and growth opportunities. And there's no way that any of us would be where we are in this moment without having gone through what we've gone through. If any one of those things had changed, where we are today would be different. It would be very different. And so we can't honor our, our present moment without honoring everything it took to get here. So what do you do when you're writing, free writing or journaling, and then guilt and shame, those feelings, they come up? I keep writing. <laughs> so, um, those, those emotions, um, yeah. They're, they're kind of carrier emotions. So they're, they're signaling that there's something else there. They're right. signaling that there is um, something you need to pay attention to. There is um, a lesson to be learned or there's an opportunity to forgive or there um, is an opportunity for growth. They're, they're, they're signaling that there's something else under that that you need to keep digging towards. Um, so that's, I when I when I come across something like that, which I absolutely have done, um, that's a signal to me to keep writing, to keep digging, um, because there's something else there. So the idea is not to stop because that would be common sense in a way. That's the reaction, right? <laughs> that's definitely the reaction. And sometimes 
sometimes the reaction, those emotions are so powerful um, that maybe you do have to stop for the night um, or for the day, but it's Im important to go back to it. Um, so I've, I've done that as well, where I've written, you know, I've spent 45 minutes in a journal and just gotten to a place where all I do is feel worse <laughs> instead of better. Yeah. Um, but there's, I, I just can't, I can't keep going. And so I, I put it up and then I, I go to sleep and I, I am able to sleep because they've at least gotten some of this mm -hmm. out. Um, but then I, I come back to it the next day. Um, and I, I keep going, I reread where I was and I, I just keep going. Um, and I keep going every single day until I finally get to, to the end where I, I know that I've uncovered what those emotions were trying to point me towards not trying to numb the pain, but rather addressing it and feeling it and going back to it to understand what the lessons are. It took me a long time to get there. And <laughs> that that's, that was the healthy way to respond to these things. It took a long time because that's not, that's not, that's not the natural reaction for most of us. Right. So right, it's right. definitely been hard, hard earned wisdom. <laughs> For some reason, do you think that women, we have more challenges with body image and the inner critic than men? In, in some respects, I think we do. Um, but I think that the reason that we do is because women tend to talk about it and men, maybe not so much. So I do know that there are body issue, um, body issues with men as well. Um, but men tend not to talk about those sorts of things. Um, so I, I do think it's out there. Um, but from my, you know, my perspective is that of a, a woman and most of my friends are, are female. And so that's, that's the experience that I have. Um, but I, I don't want to discount, um, the, the, the issues that men experience in this regard as well, because I, I do know that they're real and I do know that they're there. Right. So it's not just for us women, but also men, right? I think it is. Yeah. I just don't think it's talked about quite as much. Talk to me a bit about perfectionism. Yeah, perfectionism is something that I think a lot of us struggle with. Um, it's the reason I know that my brain keeps going back in moments of um, anxiety and stress and rehashing all of the mistakes that I've made. Um, it's also a fallacy right? We're human beings. And as human beings, we're, you know, perfectly imperfect, I think is the, the quote that I've seen. Um, and I think that um, having some healthy level of perfectionism, maybe that's not really a thing, but um, wanting to strive, wanting, using perfectionism to strive to be better at something, I think can be healthy. Um, but most of us don't, really know where to turn that off. <laughs> so um, perfectionism becomes the goal. And that's not really, it's not really, it's not an attainable goal. And so I, uh, perfectionism is the source of so much of my own anxiety and stress. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. It's challenging to turn that off. We should always strive to do better, but um, if we strive to be perfect, we, uh, we're, that's just a letdown waiting to happen. Do you believe in unconditional self-love? I think as, as a concept, yes. Um, I think, and I think that underlying the love letter journals um, is that concept of unconditional self-love. I think that um, it, it the world would be a beautiful place if we all saw ourselves for our strengths and our and our flaws, um, and just accepted us accepted ourselves for who we are, and we're able to love ourselves. You know, even if even if you know our bodies weren't perfect, or even if you know I made that mistake in the third grade and got a B instead of an A, or even if um, you know I, I I cussed too much, or what you know whatever it is. Um, and so I, but it's, gosh, I let, it's very difficult to get there. I think, um, without a whole lot of practice and a whole lot of work, um, and, um, you know, just really showing up and, and, and 
um, you know, being grateful for who we are and, and what we're doing in this very moment. Um, so yes, I think it's, I think it's a concept that works. It's just one that's really difficult to get to. Like you said, maybe the practice of gratitude, it is that practice of unconditional self-love. I, th I think it is. Um, I think, I think by, um, creating that, that practice of gratitude and, and, um, cause gratitude for me is a filter through which you should be viewing everything that's happening in your life. And by, by being able to do that, you can see the good, the bad and the ugly for exactly what it is and right. still be grateful for it. And therefore you can see yourself, the good, the bad and the ugly for exactly yeah. what it is and still be grateful for yourself, um, for who you are. Um, mm. yeah, I, I think you're right. I think they're, I think they're very, very, um, close concepts. Would you like to add anything or read a passage from one of your books before I ask you my final questions, Amy? Actually, there is a there is a quote in the Love Letters to Myself um, journal that I, I really loved. Um, and I'll just I'll just read it if that's okay. All right. It goes, gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. And that's by Zig Ziglar. Um, and I, I really like that. So gratitude begets more gratitude. <laughs> and yeah. it's kind of this nice little, um, this nice little cycle. Thank you so much, Amy. Sure. So I have a few more questions, general questions that you can always uh, link back to your work. The first one is about success. How do you define success? What is to be successful? Ooh, successful to me um, is to live a life full of passion um that i that that i it's living a life that i love doing so doing the things that i love to do finding finding my finding the passion in those things and um being able to live my life with that sort of being driven by that passion what was the hardest lesson to learn about yourself as of today oh so many of the <laughs> Um, I think the hardest one is that, um, is learning how to sit with my emotions and just feel them. Um, it's so very important to do and so very difficult to do. So those, those emotions that are sometimes tagged as bad emotions, you know, sadness and grief and anger and frustration, um, learning to just sit with them and, and being able to understand what they're trying to tell you. Um, that, that was a practice that was really difficult. Um, to, to learn. I still struggle with it sometimes um, and have to remind myself, no, no, go back and just sit with it. It's your, you, it's your brain and your body are trying to tell you something. So let's, let's listen to what it's trying to tell you. Um, but just really sitting with those, those hard emotions um, and feeling them. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to learn to do. It might be for all of us too. I think that's probably right. <laughs> What is another word for healing? I think I go back to balance. Um, it's it's about yeah. um, bringing bringing your body back to balance, bringing your um, bringing your mental health back to balance, so you are able to um, experience the good things and the bad things, and and um, and and be resilient through the, through it all. Um, but it's really about balance. Um, I don't think that it's possible for you to be happy every single day, day in and day out. Um, just like, I don't think that it's, it's good to feel sadness every single day, day in and day out. Um, and so I think healing comes back to balance and, and just being able to, um, to, to kind of bring that, that homeostasis into back into your body, back into your mind, um, and kind of just 
figure out where that balance is for you. If you knew you would die soon, meaning losing the body, would you make any change in your life or do anything differently? I don't think I would. I think that the whole Love Letters journal series is designed to... Um, it's designed to, to make make you appreciate and make you grateful for being in the place that you're in right now. And as I mentioned earlier, I think if any little thing in your past had changed, you wouldn't be where you are today. Um, and so, you know, as, as I think we all have things where we wish perhaps they had gone differently or things had happened differently, or maybe we hadn't made that decision. Um, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't be who I am today without all of that. And to go back and think that I could change, I don't know that I would want to change any of that because I don't know that I would want to change who I am today. So I don't think I would. I think I'd keep everything exactly the way that they that it happened. And live your life exactly the way you are living? Would you do anything differently? Move to a different country or call some old friends? I definitely wish that I had stayed in better contact with my friends. I'm an <laughs> introvert sometimes so that I forget, I forget to do those um, you know, I, I, there are always things in my past that, um, you know, I, I definitely could change, but a lot of that stuff you can change starting today. So in, yeah. you know, this pandemic actually has, I don't know why it, it took a quarantine and a pandemic to remind me that I could stay in touch with my friends across the country via FaceTime and Zoom. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've actually connected, reconnected with a lot of my friends that way. Um, and so these are things, you know, if I decide that I want to live in another country, I've done um, a, a lot of traveling and I, I absolutely love visiting the world. Um, I have the ability to do that. I can make that change today if I wanted to do that. And so it's really about understanding that, you know, just because you didn't take those opportunities in the past doesn't mean that those opportunities are necessarily close to you going forward. And if it's something that you want to experience um, and you think it will bring peace and gratitude and balance to your life, then my gosh, go for it. Do you believe in life after death? I do. Hmm. What kind of life, Emmy? Oh, that I don't know. <laughs> um, it, you know, I think that uh, I I think that it it's another it's another piece of our journey, right? So whether yeah. whether we come back to this world in a different form um, in order to continue the journey, or whether it's um, a different journey on a different plane of existence. Um, I'm not, I don't know that I have a whole lot of thoughts there, but I do believe that the journey continues. And my last question, what are three things about life you know for sure as of now? Oh, that um, what I know for sure today is going to change tomorrow. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. That <laughs> life life is full of opportunities um we just need to see them and um nothing is ever set in stone i absolutely love that wisdom in you that comes back over and over and over that it's life is change and the now is the only thing i really know yeah. i'm certain about Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for your genuine presence, for your wisdom, deep wisdom, and your beauty. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the opportunity, Valeria. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Sure. Um, you can go to my website, which is amydraperauthor.com forward slash journals, which is where you'll find the journals. Um, and um, that'll be the website will be there um, for any future journals that get published as well. I also have a blog. Um, and on Sundays, I blog um, 
my Sunday blogs are called gratitude corner. So I try to, to blog about some, some aspect of gratitude, self care practice, that, that type of thing, um, on Sundays. So you can check that out as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much again, Amy. And we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Amy Draper, please visit her website, amydraperauthor.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. I want to thank the Patreon members, Lawrence McGrath, Mark Basden, Terry Clayton, and Aidan Bickrock. Thank you again for listening, and bye for now.